Hey, what's up guys? Run a bunch here. Uh, this is going to be another installment of the most under the radar sports betting sports talk show on YouTube. So let's go ahead and get right into it. We got a heavy Friday slate. A lot of today's games are uh, basketball quarterfinals. Um, it's just March, you know, it's that time of year. So I say uh, might as well go a little bit heavy with basketball because we won't be having a lot of NCAA basketball left. So that's kind of why if you see me leaning heavily more towards um, NCAA basketball, it is because that our time to bet NCAA basketball is actually running out. So I'd like to get as many picks in as possible before the season is over. And, you know, we start switching more towards like NBA, uh, MLB, uh, NHL, that kind of thing. So. Like I said, uh, I'm going to continue the trend of making the picks before, you know, like the recap. I think a lot of you guys are here for picks, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So starting off, uh, NCAA basketball, my first pick of today is Toledo minus three versus Ohio. This is the uh, MAC conference uh, semifinal. Uh, Toledo this year so far is 21 and 7 overall, and they are also 20 and 8 against the spread, which is pretty good. That pretty much shows me that whenever they win games, they cover as well. Uh, Ohio is also good against the spread, but um, not nearly as good as Toledo. They're 12 and 7. Uh, it's just simply not the same. Uh, 28, 20 and 8. I kind of have to roll with that. Um, also, another fact. Uh, this semifinal game and the tournament itself is being played in Cleveland. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Rocket Mortgage where like the Cavs play, uh, but either way, it's being played in Cleveland, which is right, you know, uh, backyard of Toledo University. So I kind of feel like it's more of a home game for Toledo. Um, you know, Ohio, Ohio University is not too far away either, but this just has a more of a home feel for Toledo. So uh, I like Toledo. Uh, in Cleveland to beat Ohio. Uh, last time this these two teams met in the regular season, Toledo beat Ohio by 17 points. So I, I like Toledo to get another win here against, you know, an improved Ohio team, but uh, still an inferior Ohio team. So I like this pick up to about four and a half or five points. Um, and I have this game first on my list because this game starts at 5 p.m. I'm going to start telling you guys when times are uh, because I feel like maybe hopefully you guys aren't missing picks because you don't know what time the games are. So I'm going to get better at that. So I'm going to tell you guys, you know, what time games are and that kind of thing. So this game is at 5 p.m. this evening. So make sure to jump on this number quick. Uh, moving on. The next game is Oregon State plus eight and a half versus Oregon. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. We're in a bunch, you know, these... This so Oregon team has been a wagon all season, um, and Oregon State not so much. Oregon State is only 15 and 12 this season overall, but honestly, in that 15 and 12 span, they are 17, 9 and 1 against the spread, which shows me that even though they're losing some games, they're still managing to cover in some of those losses. Um, and like I said, I think Oregon's very good. I think Oregon's going to win this Pac-12 championship come tomorrow evening. Uh, I like them tomorrow evening. Um, but I think that this game will be a lot closer than eight and a half points. Um, it's a rivalry game. Oregon State and Oregon meet all the time. Um, I just have that feeling that uh, Oregon State's going to keep this within eight and a half points. Um, I would even play this maybe down to six or six and a half. Um, I just think it's going to be a close game down the stretch. I think Oregon State has been playing a little bit more inspired basketball lately. Um, I like Oregon to win, but I like Oregon State to cover. So moving on, this may come of a surprise to some of you guys, but this is going to be my lock of the day. Now, the lock of the day on Wednesday didn't do as well, but we're going to bounce back today. Um, I like North Carolina plus two and a half versus Florida State. Now, once again, I know what you're thinking. Run a bunch. Florida State, they are a top 20 team in the country, and they have been playing well down the stretch. Well, to me, I see that the ACC tournament is being played in Greensboro, North Carolina, and to me, that feels like 
uh, basically a home game for this UNC team compared to a Florida State team that has to travel however many hours um, to Greensboro. Um, I don't like Florida State on the road um, this season so far. They've actually had a ton of ACC games at home, uh, and I think that kind of pads their you know, stats a little bit in terms of their record because they are 12-1 and at home, but they are only 3-4 and on the road this season. I don't know how they got away with playing so little road games compared to a lot of other teams. Um, but I think this UNC team overall is just a bad matchup for Florida State. Um, they actually beat them earlier in the season. Uh, not too long ago, actually, like a week or two ago, I believe. Um, and that was kind of a shocker for a lot of people. But Florida State's been up and down in terms of playing on the road. Um, I know this is like a... Well, actually, no, this is a semifinal, isn't it? Yeah, this is a semifinal game um, for the ACC tournament. So I know Florida State's going to come out swinging. Um, but I think if North Carolina can shoot the ball the way that, you know, they've been acting like they can all season, sometimes they don't really, um, it doesn't really come to fruition, but uh, I'm hoping that UNC can show up and, you know, cover this plus two and a half versus Florida State. I would even take this down to plus two, as I think on DraftKings it has moved to plus two. I could be wrong. Uh, it may have moved back up by the time you guys see this, but it's kind of jumping around a little bit, which gives me um, some hope that people are riding on UNC as well. Uh, so this is my lock of the day. Uh, the last NCAA, the NCAA basketball game I have today is um, Southern Cal plus one and a half versus Colorado. Um, both these teams are very similar in terms of their overall record and against the spread. Um, USC is actually, I believe, second in the regular season Pac-12 standings, and Colorado was third. Um, I think literally just one game separated these two teams in terms of where they ended up ranked in their respective Pac-12 conference. Um, but I like USC on the road because, I mean, both these teams are playing in a neutral site game in Vegas. Um, Colorado's just been a measly 5-5 five and five on the road this season compared to their stacked um, home record. Um, I believe they only lost one game at home this season. So they're one of, another one of those teams like Florida State, how um, they went a lot at home, but can't necessarily put it together on the road. So I like that uh, aspect about USC and how they're a better road team in this neutral site game, as well as USC has a guy named Evan Mobley. And he is one of, if not the most efficient big man um, on the inside of, uh, of the foul line um, in the country. He, I mean, he scores 17 points a game and about like almost 60% from the field. Uh, it's actually kind of nuts. Um, I expect him to have a good game. I expect him to come out against Colorado inspired to try to make a Pac-12 championship run uh, for tomorrow. I, I honestly, I like this game down to a USC pick em, um, even odds. Um, I think the plus one and a half is a great value for a USC team that's been pretty good this season, just, you know, playing a Colorado team that also has that similar record. So I think there's some value there. So that is my NCAA basketball picks for today. Moving on, I have a NBA pick. Um, I think I've said this in an episode prior, but this is going to be a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I really feel good about this pick. Um, I have the Lakers Pacers under 216 and a half points. Now my reasoning for this, the Pacers were kind of on a streak there for a while. They were looking good. They were one of the top five teams in the East. And lately they have gone kind of on a losing streak. They've gone cold. Um, they have lacked that like dominant number one scorer this season. Um, I think DeMontis Sabonis, I think he has potential to be that number one guy, but he's, he's either on a cold streak or, um, He's just not taking the opportunities to be that number one guy. I don't know, but I don't really like them right now. And the Lakers still have one of the best defenses in the entire NBA. So I don't expect the Pacers to score much this evening. Um, plus, this is also the Lakers' first game back since the All-Star break. I expect them to have some rust in terms of shooting and scoring in the first half, maybe. So I think the first half is going to be a very low score. Um, if you want to take the under for the first half, I wouldn't blame you. I've actually thought about that myself but I am going to go with the overall uh, under of 216 and a half. Uh, so moving on, uh, my hockey pick for tonight. 
my hockey pick for uh, Wednesday evening didn't necessarily go as well. Um, thanks, Vegas, for giving me my first hockey loss of the show. But, you know, you got to roll with it. Uh, the game went to overtime, so it was kind of just whatever. Um, tonight, I'm kind of picking with two very bad hockey teams. That's kind of why the odds on the money line are so close. Um, I like the Sharks money line um, at the Anaheim Ducks. And my reasoning for this is basically that the Ducks are somehow a worse team at home than they are on the road. They are simply just 4-8 and eight this season. Um, it's, it feels to me lately that the Sharks aren't maybe as bad as their record indicates, but they're just playing some really good teams uh, as of late, uh, beginning March, uh, end of February. But, you know, I, I think they get the upper hand tonight against the Anaheim Ducks, who are... A pretty mediocre team. I actually, I think, I think the uh, Sharks are seventh, sixth or seventh in their uh, conference, and uh, the Ducks are sitting last at eighth. So, you know, kind of a bottom dweller game in terms of teams, but uh, that's kind of how you get good odds sometimes. So, I like the Sharks to uh, win this evening. So, those are my picks for today. Um, not as many, but uh, I'm expecting to have a show tomorrow, um, kind of looking at some of the championship games tomorrow evening and afternoon. And uh, I, I like a few of those games. Hopefully some teams win tonight that I expect to win. And there should be some really good games on tomorrow evening. Um, I'm excited to sit down and watch a few of them and share with you guys some picks. Um, so just a brief uh, recap of my Wednesday before we end the show. Uh, we went 3-3-1 three, three, and one, um, on Wednesday. Uh, NBA went 1-0. and The Mavericks took care of business. Uh, you know, the, the hockey game uh, went kind of in a loss, the overtime loss. Thanks, Vegas, for that. Um, NCAA basketball was 2-2. Two and two. Uh, The lock of the day lost again, so we're back to 500 at 3-3. Three and three, So that kind of stinks. I was hoping to get a little bit of momentum going. But tonight will be a little bit better. Um, and I didn't realize, well, a little fun fact, I didn't realize in Major League Baseball in the spring training that you could actually tie. But now that I think about it, it makes a lot of sense because they don't want teams to have to go to extra innings in spring. It's not even a game that counts. So they play their nine-inning uh, game, and then they just end it because the Marlins – had a guy on second and third with two outs and a guy struck out and that simply just ended the game. Uh, I was kind of surprised at that, um, but yeah, they ended in a tie. So that's where that, that one comes from at the end of that three, three and one. Uh, so basically another 500 day. Um, we're sitting over 500 for the week because that three, three and one added with the four and one we had on uh, Tuesday makes a seven, four and one on the week, which not bad, not bad, pretty good. Um, I'd like to see it, you know, extend that winning to today. Hopefully we have another good day. Um, so lock of the day, like I said, three and three. Um, thanks to Army. Army really just, you know, didn't show up to that game. Will and Maryland had them from the jump. Um, I felt very bad about that pick because, uh, I mean, on paper, Army just seemed like the team, but didn't really turn out that way. So like I say, uh, you know, it's a calculated risk. Um, you can only do so much uh, predicting things on paper. These are just numbers, you know. Uh, you guys definitely don't have to take these picks. You can go against them if you want, or you can do whatever the heck you want. You know, it's your life, your betting, your money. Um, I'm just simply a guy behind a screen telling you um, some numbers that are my picks, and you guys can follow them if you want. Um, I think I've proven that um, I win more than I lose, but, you know, not always the case. So, you know, I, I, I've enjoyed this show. Um, I'm excited to continue this trend uh, into March Madness of doing more episodes. Um, tomorrow there will definitely be an episode. I'm excited to make some picks on some championship games. And there might even be one on Sunday, uh, depending on what time the tournament, uh, the bracket selection is. So definitely going to keep you guys up to date on the most latest, um, you know, good bets to make. Um, the numbers and everything. I will keep uh, digging deep in my research and whatnot. So hopefully we can make a lot of money and, you know, 
I definitely want to hear from you guys uh, in terms of what you guys are doing. Um, I'd love to hear in the comments about, you know, that you guys are thinking about. Um, maybe we can talk about it a little bit. Um, and also, don't forget to comment. Um, starting tomorrow, um, we'll kind of have an idea of who is going to be, you know, in the bracket, in the tournament. Uh, make your guys' final four picks. Like I said, I'm doing a poor man's giveaway. Um, so whatever your guys' final four picks are, if you guys can pick that final four correctly, I will be giving you $5 straight out of my wallet. Uh, so don't miss out on that, especially if you've been consistently watching this show. Uh, I think I've said this before, about a third of you guys aren't subscribed that are watching. Um, I'd appreciate if you guys did subscribe, not just for my sake, but also for the fact you guys would um, have a much easier time getting notifications on when these videos go up because as of right now, I don't really have a set schedule. Um, I'm not really doing this for a job, I'm doing this for fun. So I'm kind of just, you know, going along with it and making these videos as I feel. Um, so hopefully as we get more subscribers and more viewers, um, I can maybe get more of a concrete schedule for you guys. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and end it. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit longer than what I was hoping for, but kind of wanted to explain some things and I will see you guys in the next episode, hopefully tomorrow. Um, but yeah, cue the outro.